In this video, we'll be building on a previous illustration, looking at the perineum and the urogenital diaphragm. In this next stage, we're going to add the external genitalia. Now, for this series, I'll only be drawing the male external genitalia, and there are a couple of reasons for this. One, it matches up with the bits of our course that I teach, and two, the structures in the male perineum are larger and easier to draw. That said, if you'd find it helpful to have a drawing of the female external genitalia, please just let me know, and I'll be happy to make another video. The penis is formed by three columns of erectile tissue. We can refer to these as the bodies, or the corpora, of the penis. The bodies start by attaching to the urogenital diaphragm. First, we have a pair of columns that run along the ischial rami, before coming together and heading out from the pelvis. On this view, I'm going to draw them as though they've been cross-sectioned, but if we switch to the lateral view, we can draw their full extent. Inside of these bodies will have a number of spaces that can fill with blood. When this happens, the columns become engorged, and the penis becomes erect. We name them after these cavern-like spaces, and so these two bodies are the corpora cavernosa. The third body starts with a widened bulb on the urogenital diaphragm. This surrounds the urethra, and again heads out from the pelvis, running under the other erectile columns. In the lateral view, we can see that this body extends beyond the torpora cavernosa and forms the glands or head of the penis. We also have the urethra running along its entire length. Now, during urination and ejaculation, fluid need to travel along this tube. However, if the tissue around it became engorged with blood like the other columns, this would constrict and close off the urethra. So, instead, this tissue is more spongy. It fills with some blood during erection but the urethra can stay open within it. Because of this, we call this column the torpor spongiosum, and the portion of the urethra inside of it is the spongy or penile urethra. The last thing to add are the muscles at the base of each column. These support the function of the penile bodies. So for example, the muscles around the corpora cavernosa will constrict to prevent blood from leaving, helping to maintain the erection. Fibers from these muscles pass from the ischial rami to cover the corpora, so we call them the ischio cavernosus muscles. We also have muscle fibers surrounding the bulb of the corpus spongiosum. When these contract, they'll help to expel any fluid remaining in the urethra. This is the bulbo spongiosus muscle. So, those are the major features of the male external genitalia. The main points I take from this are the names and functions of those erectile tissues, as well as the muscles that cover them. I'd also note that the cross-section of the penis looks surprisingly like Kanye West, circa 2008. In the final video, we're going to add the fascia covering these structures and discuss its clinical relevance. But until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.